the sun goes down.
raise them as high as you can up in the sky. Oh, and thank you today, thank you right now in this hour. Thank you for purchasing you and me, paying the price with these precious bloods. Oh, how grateful, Lord, how grateful. That's why we want to sing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Purchased with your precious blood. precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord and what a wonderful opportunity do we have again just to sit around the word after we have worshipped him we've praised him we have given him glory through our singing and now it is time to give our undivided attention to the word of God for those of you who've got your Bibles you can turn so long to John chapter 12 as well as Romans chapter 8 both of those verses will form part of what I would like to speak to you about today. But before we start, can we just go to the throne of the Lord and thank Him for this opportunity. It is with great, great honor and being fortunate. And from the depth of our hearts we come, just to come and say, Lord, you are so awesome. Thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much for your love, your care, your grace, your mercy. Here we are now to spend time in your word. Here we are, Lord, just to come and become quiet and listen and pay attention in the times that we are living in because it's so important that we pay attention to your word, Lord, because this is going to save us at the end of time. I pray now that you will bless us, myself, Lord, as I'm about to minister the word, Holy Spirit, that you will guide my lips, and that you will give in my heart that which I need to say thank you that we can come and ask this now right in jesus name amen isn't this great so beautiful always just to come and enter into his presence knowing that he's faithful and that he's there to come and help us um i already asked you to turn with me to john chapter 12 and romans chapter 8 for easy reference we will find the rest of the verses scriptures i'm going to use on the side of the slide. John chapter 12 verse 47 says the following, if anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge and condemn the world, that is to initiate the final judgment of the world, but to save the world. Now before I continue just in this one verse, both these words we will find and it derives from there. He says, I I'm not going to judge as yet, but I'm here to save, and that is his compassion for a lost world. If you turn with me to Romans chapter 8, of course, my uh, beloved 
Bible in the book, as well as chapter. I love to preach from here, I love to quote it. But listen to what Romans 8, verse 1 says. Therefore, there is now, not yesterday, tomorrow, now, no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. It's very important that the other English translation says, who do not walk after the flesh or in the flesh, but walks after the Spirit. What I want you to take note today of is these two words, compassion and condemnation. What is it that you and I can possibly learn from this? And before we continue going on, I first want to explain to you what does these two words mean? Both of them coming from the Greek, and then I'm going to give you a definition. The word compassion, the meaning of that, in the Greek the word is splank mitzumai. Splank mitzumai, which means to have the bowels yearn. That is, figuratively feel sympathy to pity. Have been moved with compassion. Okay? Condemnation, on the other hand, the Greek is katak rima. And that means an adverse sentence, verdict, or condemnation. Let's have a look at the definition of both. Compassion means, the definition of that is, to have sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. Whereas condemnation is defined to be the expression of a very strong or severe disapproval. And I don't think in any of the two words it's um, needed to be explained even furthermore because it actually says what it says. Okay. What I would like to bring under your attention in this is we are living in times where people don't pity others anymore. They don't sympathize, they don't feel it, and they are not moved with compassion. You can just walk in different shops, in a mall or wherever you are driving the street. You can see that. Even in our workplaces, we will find that. There is no compassion. In other words, people don't care about someone else anymore. The same can be said of condemnation. On the other hand, people are very quick to condemn. We are quick to judge. We are quick rather to say something um, and get that stitch in, get that, you know, it's like a, a knife and, and, and you just stab and, and we just judge. We don't know what's going on. We don't have the information and we just put off and go and we will just condemn others. We need to understand the Word of God, and that is very important, okay? So I have read to you, John 12, 47 says, If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I did not judge, nor, for I did not come to judge and condemn the world. That is to initiate the final judgment of the world, but to save the world. So Christ came because of the fact that the world is in a lost state. And what we mean by that is a spiritually lost. Okay? That's what we mean by that. And I want you to understand. In other words, they are living in their sinful nature, they are living in their sinful life, and as if there is nothing happening after this when we will pass on, and they will spend their time doing whatever they want to do. Therefore, 
That brings us to a place where they don't worry about others. We don't show sympathy. We don't have pity on others. We will simply just go along. And if we can, we will simply just bomb him out of the way so that you and I don't have to do anything with him. But there are places in the word of God, and, and, and this is what caught my attention. I want you to turn with me to Isaiah 49 verse 15. I want to start with Isaiah 49 verse 15. Listen to what the word of God says. The Lord answered, Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. We will hear so many times of women that will bring a child into this world and they will abandon them. There's no compassion, throw them on a place where, where rubbish is, and lead them along the street, put them in front of someone else's door, etc. But here in Isaiah, God says, can a woman forget that? And I have to tell you today that people must seriously have something being wrong with them if they can just leave a child like that. Now he says, can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion? Are we so heartless that we can walk away? Even so, if this happens, it may happen, and it does. God says, I will not forget you. And right here, he gave the promise that he will show compassion, which he did. And this brings me to other places in the word of God. Let us have a look at Psalm 78, verse 38. Psalm 78, verse 38. Listen to what the psalmist says. But he, and I love this, he, the source of compassion and loving kindness, forgave their wickedness and did not destroy them. Can you see what's happening here? Here the Bible says, Many times he restrained his anger and did not stir up all his wrath. The source of compassion. God. And that we find in our Lord Jesus Christ. This compassion. In other words, this yearning of the bowels. This feeling sympathy, having pity, being moved with compassion for others. You may say, yes, Andre, but where do, we, where do we find that? What does it say, being moved with compassion? Remember the song that we sang prior to the word? He had compassion on me. He touched my eyes and now I see. He touched my feet and now I walk in his way. He had compassion on me. He touched my heart and now I'm free. Praise the Lord. He had compassion on me. Oh, and this just... So many times, bring a song in my heart, being so thankful and so grateful that God bestowed that compassion, showing that pity, that sympathy towards you and me, giving us the assurance that he's there and that he will never let go of us. Isn't this awesome? But let us just carry on and, and, and page a little bit more through the word. Let us just see what the word of God says and, and teaches us because it will help us. To see what is meant by this compassion. Now I'm going to read Matthew chapter 9. And I'm going to read from verse 35. Just Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages in Galilee. Teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news. The gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease. And every kind of sickness. His words and his works reflecting his messiahship. Verse 36. When he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion and pity for them because they were dispirited and distressed 
like sheep without a shepherd. They were dispirited and distressed. Jesus saw that and he, he was moved with compassion. Something happened within here and that caused him to, to, to pay attention to them, to adhere to them. That's why he healed them. That's why he, he cured them from their, their diseases. Today, you and I will see someone, we will pass right by. We will hear someone, we will just throw a deaf ear and we will not pay attention. And I know sometimes I'm guilty myself because we are sometimes in a hurry. And you feel you don't always have because all that you think and I think all they want is just money, money, money. Have we ever stopped just to say, you know what, I don't have as Peter and John did. I've got nothing to give you. Gold and silver, I have none. But what I have in the name of Jesus. Can I pray for you, friend? Remember, God loves you. That is to be moved with compassion. Yeah, but Andre, you must understand, I don't have time for that. You see, this is what I'm going to want to come to. What if God says, I don't have time to listen to you? I don't have time now to pay attention to your problems that you have. I cannot solve this. I cannot sort it out for you because I am too busy. But you see, he says, said in Isaiah, a mom perhaps may forget, but I can never forget, says God. And this is what is so awesome for me. This is what is so great. And this is why I'm coming to you with this, that we... Especially, especially as a church, especially as a child of God, that we will come there and go back to the place where we will show that compassion to others. That we will have a passion to be compassionate. Having our bowels yearn to show sympathy to others. To be moved with compassion. Or have we become so heartless that we overlook these things? You see, you and I will one day, we will be standing in front of the throne. And, and, and I will get there just in a minute or so. But I just want to, to share with you and talk to you about the importance Listen to what the definition said. It said sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. Do you still have a heart for someone in need? Or are we really throwing a blind eye and a deaf ear? It's none of my concern. I don't want to stay out of trouble. I don't want to get involved. It's better for me just to hand and handle a distance. I don't want to get involved. The Son of God never, ever did that. He stooped low, very low. That's why he took on the form of man to get involved on a daily basis in the lives of men. And you and I today can just imagine, you see, can we still make time for Jesus can we still make time for one another? And this is why it's so important that, and I, I, I'm pleading with you today, that you and I will just ask the Lord, bring us back, Lord, to that place where we are moved with compassion for others. Their misfortunes, Lord, that, that we will, their sufferings, their shortcomings, their failures, that we will not just turn our faces away, but that we will pay attention, showing that compassion in the same way that you have shown and bestowed it unto us. This is all to do with compassion. And I cannot emphasize the importance of why it is so important that you and I will do as we have been instructed, that you and I will follow. Listen to me, that we will follow the perfect example that we are seeing in our Christ, in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. You see, we're not going to escape these things. You know that. And I've told you that in the past. We're not going to escape this. It's going to be there. 
And unfortunately, you and I have to face the consequences. But I'm coming to you, urging you today, again, just to, to show a little bit more compassion. Your household, outside, in your working place, everywhere. People standing on the corner of the streets begging, what do we do? We just drove by. Sometimes they greet, we don't even greet back. Just make a point of that. We don't know what's going on in their hearts. And please, please, I'm not saying now stop at everyone and just give them money. That's not what I'm saying. But friendliness costs nothing. To be friendly, to show someone, you know, to be just, hi, hello, makes them feel noticed. I am being noticed. Even though you have nothing to give. Compassion. Won't you just stop your car, just go around the block, come and park your vehicle and just walk up to that person and say, do you know that Jesus loves you? I've got nothing to give you, but I'm here just to come and say to you today that he cares about you. I know I'm talking to myself, but you see, Holy Spirit is really, really urging me on this so that we will not just turn a blind eye and, 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 and don't pay attention to this. But that you and I will really make a point of it to come and say, Lord, here we are. and We will do whatever you ask from us. Lord, we, we will be there where, where you need us to show others that you still care about us. I want you just to turn with me to Matthew chapter 20. Another place in the word of God, verse 34. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes. It was a couple of men who were blind. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and followed him as his disciples. And a disciple is a follower. You and I cannot follow Christ, just him being good to us. Making sure that everything has been taken care of. Because that will be simply just wrong, isn't it? But what is important is that you and I will just understand. Can, can I and may I please just go back to verse 29 of Matthew chapter 20. Sorry. As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. And two blind men were sitting by the road. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David, Messiah. Listen to the reaction of the crowd. The crowd sternly told them to be quiet. But they cried out all the more, Lord, son of David, Messiah, have mercy on us. And Jesus stopped and called them and asked, what do you want me to do for you? They answered him, Lord, we want our eyes to be opened. And then verse 34 says, moved with compassion. In other words, if you look at our explanation from the Greek, splank, mezumai, which means the, having the bowels yearn, the inside, something happened, moves, yeah. And this is the Christ, the Lord that you and I serve. Don't you think he expects the very same from his followers, you and me, his disciples? Yeah, Andre, but why don't they go and find a work, a job? I was there myself, meaning, saying those words. What is it that you understand? What do you know about them? Did you invite them for lunch or for supper and, or buy them food? And did you perhaps at any point in time ask them, why are you standing here? What happened? We don't know. Beggars come a long way. It wasn't only just for the now. You find it in the word of God. Go read it. Can you and I just come there where we show this compassion? I want you to go with me now and we turn out to the other side. And now we're going to look at the word condemnation. And we read it. I gave it to you. The expression of a very strong or severe disapproval. What do we do? Passing by, don't even greet back or yell at them or just give them a cold shoulder. 
What are we doing? We are condemning them because we don't approve. We don't approve of the situation that they are in. Come church. Come. I know that it cuts very fine. And it cuts straight into the heart. I know that. But it's time that you and I, before it's too late, if we say we follow Jesus, we say we follow him, we love him, we will obey his commandments. I read it to you. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge them. For I did not come to judge and condemn the world, but I came to save them. I came to save the world. He came to show that compassion to help us. Have we become so heartless, so hard in our hearts that we don't have room for this anymore? Would you care to turn with me? John chapter 8, verse 11, the first verse concerning condemnation. This is about the adulterous woman. You remember the Pharisees brought her in to Jesus. Said, Lord, we caught her red-handed. We caught her in the act of adultery. And then Jesus started, there was a conversation, and Jesus started, and he wrote in the ground, etc., etc. And then in verse 10, straightening up, Jesus said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She answered, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on, sin no more. I want you to really come to a place where you and I will really stand up for what we believe, but that we will portray and display the very act and not condemning people. I want you to hear I want you, Jesus says in verse 12, if I may read it, he says, once more Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. You see, if we have him, we will have compassion. If we don't, we will condemn. But I find that even... In the lives of children of God, we condemn others instead of having compassion. Would you care to turn with me to John chapter 8, please? John chapter 8, verse 11. And I read it again if you have gone away from there. Listen. I do not condemn you either. Go from now on, sin no more. Easiest way out. The law was in place. The law was very precise in what needed to be happened. But Jesus honored why he came. Romans 2. Could you turn with me there? Listen to what Romans 2, verse 1 to 2 says. Therefore, you have no excuse or justification. Every one of you who hypocritically judges and condemns others. For in passing judgment on another person, you condemn yourself. Because you have judged from a position of arrogance or self-righteousness. Or habitually practicing the very same things which you denounce. And we know that the judgment of God falls justly and in accordance with truth. On those who practice such things. Can I read it again? Therefore you have no excuse or justification. Every one of you who hypocritically judges and condemns others. If you judge someone else, you are judged already. The word is clear when it comes to that. And listen to what the Amplified says. He says you are, you are condemning from a position, you are judging from a position of arrogance or self-righteousness. Ouch, Andre, that hurt. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. We know that. This word was never easy and will never be easy. 
A song that says, it's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven. For many are the trials and the sorrows on this road that you and I have to face. It's not easy. But what is important is that you and I will definitely make sure that we are not in a position where we judge or condemn. There's one who's going to do that. He will judge at the very end and then you and I will be condemned if we do not keep his commandments. See, it's not me, so don't get angry at me. The word of God says that. And do you know what is going to judge us? This very word. The very word will judge you and me one day. Will you turn with me to Matthew chapter 12? Matthew chapter 12. And I will be reading verse 36 as well. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will have to give an accounting for every careless or useless word they speak. For by your words, reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin. And by your words, rejecting me, you will be condemned and sentenced. So what will judge us? Who will judge and condemn The word of God, it's written. It's been given for you and me. And if we don't use it, and if we don't apply it, you and I will have to face the consequences. And this is why I'm trying to get to you to understand why it's so important. Move away. Can we show that sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others? And don't just delight in that. He deserves it. She deserves it. Look what they've done to me. That's condemnation. You have condemned them because of. We cannot afford to be there, church. Time is running out, isn't it? And God expects from us as true believers and followers, disciples, to follow and live out his example. Instead of express a very strong or severe disapproval. And so many times what we say, we can never take it back. Be careful. Be careful what you say. Be careful how you say it. Because you and I will one day have to stand before his throne. Okay? It's important. Would you turn with me now? Please to First Peter chapter eight, or three rather, verse eight. First Peter chapter three, and I'm going to to then just sum up in these verses to follow. Listen to what the Word of God says. Finally, all you. All of you be like-minded, united in spirit, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, courteous, and compassionate toward each other as members of one household and humble in spirit. And never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Avoid scolding, berating, and any kind of abuse. But on the contrary, give a blessing, pray for one another's well-being, contentment and protection. For you have been called for this very purpose, that you might inherit a blessing from God that brings well-being, happiness and protection. Isn't this just awesome? Have you heard? Finally, all of you be like-minded. In other words, be united in spirit. Because if we've got the spirit of God truly within us, we will not condemn. If we've got the spirit of God within us, if we have that, I want to tell you, we will show 
compassion. End of story. We will be sympathetic. We will be kind-hearted. We will be courteous, compassionate towards one another. We will be humble in the spirit because no other ourselves, we can't do it. We will never return evil for evil hmm? or insult for insult. We will never retaliate. When someone hurt me, we will not retaliate. We will not abuse anybody, whether it's physically or verbally. On the contrary, we will give a blessing. Pray for one another's well-being, contentment and protection. Pray for that person on the corner of the street. Pray for that person who asks for something. Say, doesn't let me pray that God will turn out and that your life will turn around and that you will find Jesus and that he will sort out things for you, that your life will be changed. Do you know how dangerous it is to stand there in the middle of the street with cars just passing by? But how desperate must one be? And I can hear you think, yeah, but they deserve it. They want to be there. Don't go there. I was just telling you about being compassionate. I was just trying to tell you how Jesus would have dealt with this. And again, I'll repeat myself. I'm not saying stop at everyone and give them money. That's not what I'm saying. Yes, we had a little bit of negative experiences ourselves. But that... Does that give us reason to stop showing compassion? I don't think so. I really don't think so. You see, he says, pray for one another's well-being, contentment and protection. Yeah, of course, this would be much more easier, being of the same household, isn't it? Physically, with our families, as well as spiritually, with the members of the body of Christ. But he says, for you have been called for this very purpose, that you might inherit a blessing. What have we been called for? To pray for one another's well-being, contentment and protection. And that, that is going to cause you and me to inherit a blessing. Which will bring well-being, happiness and protection for us. Isn't this great? You have heard the word. I am not there. I'm not in your mind. I don't know what you were thinking. I don't know what you are saying while I'm busy. But I'm here today to come and ask you what the world needs is Jesus. They need him. We sang it. He's the one who's worthy to take the book and to open the seals. He's the one who purchased everybody with his blood. Everybody. All depends on whether you and I, that person, accepts him into their lives. But he came for everybody. And I'm pleading with you today. Can we start making a difference, especially as the Church of Christ, the body of the Lord? Can you and I, as, as children of God, if you really want to, to fall in, in, in that group, and, and, and you want to stand on that and boast in it? It doesn't help we boast, we are children of God, and we go to church and blah, 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 all of these things, and we don't show it. It doesn't. You hear what I'm saying? I think you will agree with me. You will agree with me. So what's going to be? Is it going to be being compassionate? Or is it going to be condemning others? A choice that I have to make. But my plea is, do what is right. Walk in righteousness. Walk in the light. See people the way Jesus would have seen. Move. May God bless his word upon our hearts. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord. It's all over. Seeing, hearing how you have been moved with compassion for others. Having a heart, Lord, and sympathy. 
the misfortunes and the sufferings of others. Lord, we need this ceremony still to, to learn. We are by far not there, but help us, Lord, please, so that one day we will stand before you, not empty-handed. Even if it's a small prayer, a word of encouragement, give us the strength to do that, so that that person, whatever the case may be, and the circumstance may be, will feel that they are important. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We can come and ask this now. Bless us, Lord. Take us through this week. Forgive us where we fall short. Forgive us. Our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Thank you that I can come and ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. God's word is wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Shall we receive the blessing? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the sweet communion with the Holy Spirit, be stay and remain with us until Jesus comes again. And you and I, as his church, his body, my answer to that. Amen. That's correct. Shalom, friends. Be blessed, stay blessed, and Maranatha. Child, 
well done Speak my word Speak to me Speak and I'll be quick to answer Speak and I will answer, Lord.